So let's begin with the first exam question of the diffusion section, where it asks you to look at the photograph of a human fetus, as shown. So the fetus is attached to the mother by the placenta. In the placenta, oxygen diffuses from the mother's blood into the fetal blood. The placenta is adapted to increase the rate of diffusion. Describe one adaptation for one mark. So this is all about diffusion and the ideal conditions required for diffusion to take place. So they're basically asking you to recall your memory from this higher tier material here, which is basically saying that what is required is a large surface area or a good blood supply, and stating any of these two would get you the mark. These conditions for diffusion is not just for the placenta between the mother and fetus, but it's also for gaseous exchange in your lungs, as mentioned here, where there's a need for a very good blood supply and a huge surface area. Memorizing these will not just answer the question for one situation, but for many situations of diffusion. So important to commit it to memory. Talking about the diffusion of plants. So it reads, Doug grows strawberries. The diagram shows one of his strawberry plants. So what you need to notice is about the size of the leaves. So when strawberry plants photosynthesize, carbon dioxide enters the plant. Write down the name of the process by which carbon dioxide enters the plant. Well, for one mark, you should know that the process is diffusion. And you should know this because of what's written here in the revision guide says at night photosynthesis stops oxygen diffuses into leaf cells and carbon dioxide diffuses out of leaf cells so the magical word here is diffusion diffuses so returning back to the exam question carbon dioxide enters plants through their leaves describe two ways leaves are adapted for efficient absorption of carbon dioxide so for two marks one mark for each of the ways mentioned well anything to do with diffusion you should always say large surface area that's definitely one mark now for the second mark, with the aid of the revision guide, as stated here in the higher tier material, basically stomata are specially adapted when open to help increase the rate of diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So basically to get the two marks, what you need to mention is large surface area of the leaves and large amounts of stomata, and that will get you the two marks. So three marks in less than a minute, just like that. Placenta, and what you should take note is that the question is a repeat of what we've already done, but just reworded slightly differently, but they're still examining on the same area of the syllabus, or more importantly, the same area of the revision guide. So let's go through the uh, questions and you'll see where the repeat comes in. The diagram shows the structure of the placenta. So I'll write down the name of one substance that moves in the direction of the arrows. So for one mark, let's look at where the arrows are. So the arrows are pointing into the space filled with mother's blood. So basically, mother's blood and the fetus must be here. So what goes into the mother's blood? So one substance, if we're turning back to the revision guide, we can identify as oh, a growing fetus inside the uterus has no direct access to food or oxygen. So the fetus excretes carbon dioxide and other waste products such as urea by diffusion through the placenta in the mother's blood. So to answer the question, you can write urea or carbon dioxide. And if we go back to the exam question, Write down the name of the process by which this substance moves. So for one mark, as we've just read, the process is diffusion. So diffusion is actually quite important. I mean, just that one word, diffusion, will get you one mark. And that one mark could distinguish the difference between your A and A star grade. So going on to the next question, write down two ways that the placenta is adapted to speed up the exchange of substances between the mother and the fetus. So for two marks, state down two points. And when reading this question, you know, alarm bell should ring then you guys know that you've already seen this type of question. And what they're asking for is basically this area here, where you write down a large surface area and a good blood supply. So these two will get you the two marks. The next exam question is a simple one mark question. Basically ask you to recall the definition of what diffusion is. So the question reads, oxygen moves into the root hair cell by diffusion. What is meant by the term diffusion? So to simply get this one mark, you just need to simply recall the definition from the revision guide, which is diffusion is the movement of a substance from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So it's important to memorize this definition. One mark, just like that. The final exam question for diffusion is asking you to look at the diagram. It shows the cells in the leaf of a plant. Okay. So oxygen moves out of the leaf during exchange. What is the name of this process? For one mark, you should know because we've seen this section already. It's down here. The stomata is specially adapted to help increase the rate of diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So the magical word here is diffusion to get you the one mark. So the name and process is diffusion. 
So the next question, the spongy layer is adapted for efficient gas exchange. Explain how. Whenever the question is asking you about adaptation to diffusion, the first thing that should come to your head is large surface area. So large surface area is like the fundamentals of gas exchange. So just say large surface area, and that will get you the one mark. And finally, cells have to differentiate to make all the different cells in a plant. Cell differentiation in plants is different from animals. Explain one way it is different. So don't be misled that this thing is talking about differentiation. That's just kind of like to mislead you to where you should be thinking about the answer. The real question is asking you, what's the difference between plant and animal cell? And as we've seen in a previous exam question, we, we know that the difference between an animal and a plant cell, there are three structures. A plant has a cell wall, a vacuole, and chloroplast. These three things are what plant cells have that animal cells do not. So let's move on to the next section.